Okay, uh, I've just got a few minutes to kill, so I'm gonna put the jugs on this thing. Uh, start with cylinder number one, and just get the gasket on it. Now the gasket only goes one way. So, you can't put it on wrong. Now with the uh, the motor is spun here so that both of the tappets are in, which is going to be good. And I'll show you why in a second here. Now, I pushed the piston out uh, just far enough to clear the wrist pin. This is uh, an odd, odd setup. Basically, just put a little, get a little bit of grease inside of that connecting rod just for good measure I've already greased the pin and we're going to try to get the pin through there it goes just like that okay and then just gently set that down and then my usual State of unpreparedness. Here's the piston clip. These are supposed to be replaced when you rebuild the motor. Just FYI. Okay, now I'm just going to set it in there and then I'm going to take my finger and push it. And hopefully, you heard that click on camera. Look, make sure it looks like it's in all the way. Give it a little shove, and it is definitely in all the way. Now, we can carefully let's see if I turn this over. I just turned the crank over a little bit to pull it up here. piston to go back into the bore. And there it goes. Okay. I'm going to get a nut on this right now just so I don't lose the damn thing. The manual actually says a 3 8 nut and lock washer. This uh, had these flange nuts on it so that's what's going back on it. Now with the back of my hammer I'm just going to try to it's going a little crooked here. Okay, what a pain this is. Just a little bit crooked. It really needs to go straight. Okay, there. There she goes. Whew. Now I'm just going to put a nut on there so it doesn't fall off. Okay. 360 inch pounds and here is the uh, torque sequence it says to tighten these two to 100 inch pounds then tighten the remainder of the nuts in the sequence using the sequence shown when this is complete torque all nuts to 360 inch pounds following the recommended sequence the problem with that is you have to have their special barrel nut and I don't uh, I mean, I saw them for 50, 60 bucks. I don't think I need it. I mean, I've done a lot of, you know, I've been working on this stuff all of my life. I think I can, uh, I'm comfortable just uh, sort of guessing at the torque on this. So, and I'll just show you what I'm going to do. Uh, let me get the rest of these nuts 
pulled up and uh, we'll come right back. Okay, I've just got my handy dandy half inch uh, Craftsman wrench here. So what I'm going to do is just snug that one and I am going in sequence snug that one for what it's worth snug number three I'm trying to keep my fat head out of the camera just snug number four and then I'll snug up five and six now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get these just about as tight as I can get them. Two, three, four, five, and six. Now, the reason I'm comfortable doing this, I mean, there, these are some big, heavy, thick flanges on here. The whole thing is machined, so the bore fits inside of there. So I'm pretty comfortable. We're going to be okay. Now I'm just going to take, put my two wrenches together like this, and I'm just going to get a little bit more on each one. Again, following the torque sequence. That's the most critical part, I think, is the sequence. There's number four. Number five. And number six. And then I'm going to recheck my valve lash to be sure that that's still okay. And then I'll do the other side, and then we'll come back. Maybe we'll put the stator and the closing plate on at that point. All right, got the closing plate here. Uh, the manual, you know, they want you to put this seal in after the closing plate is installed. That's not going to work for me. Uh, all I have to put that seal in is this socket, and that's not going to fit over the PTO shaft. So I left this in for a reason. Uh, the manual says to set it at 530 seconds deep. So I just took this scale and I verified that yeah it is at uh, 530 seconds deep. So we're going to try to get it back as close as we can to that 530 second. Uh, I'm just going to use this big socket see if I can pop it out of here. Shouldn't take too much to drive it out. And there it is. I've got the new one over here. But uh, I'm going to take a little bit of steel wool and just uh, gently clean the inside of there. Steel wool or scotch bright or something would work. Uh, it is aluminum, so keep in mind you don't want to damage it. And this is cleaning right out like nothing. It left a nice uh, witness line. This should be uh, fairly easy to just drive right back in. Cleaned right up good. Uh, we're back with the uh, black RTV it says to put a uh, what it says a sixteenth or a thirty second of an inch bead of sealer around it so we're just gonna get a little all the way around here not something I normally do when installing a seal I don't usually use sealer but the manual does specify, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, I rebuild some, it's a little plugged up there. I rebuild some uh, older Johnson Evinrude outboard uh, lower units 
and it's the same way they call for some very specific sealers on that stuff so I go ahead and just follow the manual get started in there pretty straight and we're just gonna try to very gently in there nice and square and right to that 532nd depth I mean Kohler does sell a, a real specific tool for installing these seals I'm kind of a cheap ass there's a few special tools they sell if you download the manual it goes through the whole list of them okay that's only two or three it's a little bit deeper oh, that looks good right there I think oh, yeah that's pretty good the scale is nice because you can go around and uh, Make sure you've got the same depth all the way around this thing, and it looks really good. So we're going to call that done. I'm going to get the, the motor back over here, and we'll get this installed. So the motor's getting heavy now. hard to get that to lay flat on the bench. So I'm kind of goofing around trying to get it propped up here in the camera frame. Okay, we've got the little check ball goes in the hole and then the spring on top of it. The oil pump can go in now. Like so cover says which side is out and that's because this side is machined so make sure that's nice and clean and there's four screws let me find a nut driver real quick here I don't honestly know if there's a, a torque spec or anything on these. I'm sure there probably is, but uh, I'm not so concerned. I'm just going to go around, snuggle all four of them up, and then uh, get them good and tight after that. It's a heavy plate, nice flat machined surfaces on both sides, so it's, it's not going to take a whole lot to get it uh, down flat you know you're not you don't have to worry about warping it or anything get those nice and tight there we go okay here's the gasket see how that goes looks like it's the same either way no look at there there's a hole we're not catching up there so okay now on the closing plate this seal was greased in there uh, I cleaned that grease out because you don't know what could have stuck to it So I'm just going to re-grease it, just using the uh, same 
assembly lube that I've been using. Vaseline would work, motor oil. Okay, get the shaft lubed up a little bit. You just don't want to damage that seal while you're installing it. And then the cover should just pop right down. Wiggle it a bit there. There it is. Now, in the manual, uh, it gives you the uh, torque sequence, and uh, it's 150 inch pounds. Got the bolts here. I've got my torque wrench set to 100 inch pounds right now. Uh, what I'll do is just run these in with my little speeder and then I'll torque them to 100 and then to 150 after that. At some point I'll probably cut you out of here. But uh, you know, that's just not how I roll, right? So this is, again, torquing them to 100. I'm going to stand this thing up. I think you get the idea, so I will... Uh, Go ahead and torque these to 100, then 150, and uh, that'll probably be the end of this video. So, I will just say now, thank you for watching. Oops, wrong bolt. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. Other than that, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to give me a thumbs up, that'd be cool. If you want to want to see some more of the projects I'll have going this summer, you can subscribe if you like. That'd be awesome too. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later.